Hi everyone, welcome to Lauren's Scrap Lot in a night of simple stamping. I had a friend ask me if I could show her how to take one rubber stamp set and add multiple colors to it so that I could get multiple colors on an image. So I decided I would do a video and share it with all of you tonight. We're going to do two cards. So one is going to use our stamp and write markers and the other card is going to use sponges, but both cards are going to show you how you can get multiple colors just on one rubber stamp. So the first card that I would like to show you uses our set called Good Morning Magnolia. This is a massive set that has coordinating dyes and paper and embellishments and all those goodies. It was featured in our annual catalog this last year and I'm so excited to say that it's going to be carrying on to next year's catalog as well. So this bundle has a stamp here that I just mounted on our largest block. This is block F and it is the biggest block in your collection. So you'll want to just make sure to put it on the table in front of you and not worry about lifting it up and worrying um, about holding on to it. So if you would like to follow along with the card and make this one with us, you can go ahead and do some paper cutting right now. So we're going to grab a piece of Rococo Rose cardstock and I've cut this at five and a half by eight and a half. And there's a little score mark down the center that is at the four and a quarter inch mark. This can just get folded in half. If you have a bone folder on hand, you can make that spine nice and crisp. This is going to be our card base. For the white, the whisper white that we will be stamping on, I have cut this piece at four inches by five and a quarter. And then for these little tags down here, you'll need two scraps. So one is of the early espresso, and that is going to be one inch wide by three and three quarters inches long. And then the scrap of Rococo Rose is going to be three quarters of an inch wide and three and a half inches long. Those you can just put aside for the moment. What we're worrying about is our main stamp as well as our Whisper White piece here. Okay, so our main stamp we're going to come and work on with the Stampin' Write markers. Now Stampin' Up! has two different kinds of markers. These Stampin' Write markers, which are a water base with the dye uh, added to them, and our blends markers, which are an alcohol base. So these Stampin' Write markers are perfect for solid coloring, for rubber stamp coloring, and they also have a beautiful fine tip on them so that you can actually use this to write in any of the cards. Our blends markers, unfortunately, you cannot use for this technique. Alcohol dries far too quickly, and so we wouldn't be able to get the color saturated on the stamp um, and for it to stay before it dried. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our stamp and write markers here. I have four colors, the Mango Melody, Early Espresso, Mossy Meadow, and Rococo Rose right there. So I'm going to start with my Mossy Meadow and worry about my leaves. I'm going to use the thick side. If you're wondering what that is, look for this thick um, white mark as opposed to the white strip that's just the tiny one on the end here. So we want this nice fat edge. And we're just going to start coloring straight over top of all of the leaf sections. Okay, so this you're just kind of messy coloring and it doesn't matter if you accidentally get a little on the rubber inside. You won't stamp hard enough for that to show up on your paper. So just go ahead and color all over. If you want, you can turn your stamp around, get that last leaf nice and dark and then we're going to move on to the stem the stem i'm using the early espresso color for so that's just this right down here add a little bit right there the flower itself is going to be the rococo rose color so this one will just be a little bit 
tinier of work, but you just go all around the perimeter here and add that Rococo Rose coloring. And then when we get to the end of this section, I'm going to grab my Mango Melody and add it just to the center of this flower, just to give it a little bud there. Now, this is the gross part, especially with COVID going on, but you're going to want to huff onto this stamp so that you get a little bit of moisture into the colors again because right now they've started to kind of dry. So I just sit here and just huff on it a couple times, maybe wash your blocks and your stamp well before giving it to someone else next. And then you're just going to turn it over and plunk this on your paper. I like to let this rest on my cardstock for a few seconds now. I don't have as much ink on the stamp as I would if I just stamped straight with an ink pad. So what I like to do is let that moisture from my breath kind of soak in and let those colors all soak into the paper really nicely. So what you're left with, if you can see, is just this beautiful assortment of colors that you have not had to do multiple steps of stamping to achieve. So this I'm going to attach straight to our card base with my snail. I just end up putting a little bit in each of the corners and attaching that to the front. And then before you attach the other two pieces, we're going to do a little stamping. So I've taken the thanks sentiment and my Rococo Rose ink and tap, 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 because this is very juicy. Just get a little bit right on there. And then the small magnolia bud is actually going to be our best friend for this one. We're just going to stamp a section of it off on the end here. So you don't actually show the whole flower, you're just showing parts of the petal features. Okay, and then again with our snail, we're going to just attach that straight to the front of this espresso rectangle. And I just grabbed adhesive once more and put this on the front of my card. So very quick and easy, but beautiful in the amount of detail that you can see in this stamp. So as promised, I have another card to show you. So this card is going to be using sponging as the technique. So we're going to make this bird card here. And let me see if I can zoom in for you. There you go. If you can see, there's a lot of variety of color and shades that I've achieved only by using three colors, but just sponging haphazardly around my stamp. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You can mix and match whatever colors you prefer, but I thought I was just going to continue on using kind of a red and bluish theme here. So the stamp set that I've chosen to use today is the free as a bird one. We have this great branch full of birds at the top. This set is also carrying over into our next annual catalog. So there'll be even more ideas I'm sure that people come up with for this one too. So for your card base, you're going to cut the Rococo Rose cardstock at five and a half by eight and a half. You'll put a score line down the middle here, and that's at the four and a quarter mark. And then I've embossed half of my card, and this is with the new ornate floral embossing folder. So we can go ahead and fold that in half so it's ready to go. Again, if you've got a bone folder, it just gives the most crisp edge that you can possibly use. For the next two pieces, we're going to need a piece of Pretty Peacock and Whisper White. And I've cut the Whisper White at two and a half by four inches. And the Pretty Peacock would be two and three quarters 
by four and one quarter inch. So put that one aside for the moment. We're just going to need this Whisper White and then we're going to need some inks as well. So I've chosen three inks here. I've got my Cherry Cobbler and we're gonna just open those up. Balmy Blue and Pretty Peacock. I like to work kind of darkest or lightest to darkest. So what I did was I took some of my sponges and I just chopped them up into little pieces so that I made a sponge for each of the inks so I'm not mixing and matching my sponges. And I've played a little so this is dirty and I didn't wash it but that's okay. So we're going to start with our lightest color here and just grab some color and add it just in a couple places around our stamp. Okay, we're gonna come in with the next one here and continue building in a different section of the stamp. Okay, and then with that final color, this is why I say to use the darkest because you can actually use it as a shadow just along the edges of some of these sections. Okay, doesn't need to take over the whole space just like we did with our last um, stamp, you're going to huff on it a little bit too. The reason I'm not using a water spritzing tool is because I don't want the colors to bleed into each other. They could do that on another technique, but my point is that I can see clearly defined um, colors right now. Okay, so just quickly, and then you're going to stamp on your paper. Once again, make sure to hold it on that paper just a few seconds longer than you usually would. And then when you lift it off, you have a great assortment again of these colors and shades. And nothing will look the same um, the, no matter how many times you do it. So I took my sentiment here, the world needs more of you, and I just add that to the bottom right hand corner. And I did stamp that in the Pretty Peacock ink. So you can now close your ink pads up because if you're like me, you tend to put your fingers in them if they're not closed, especially the reds, and then just move them out of your way. We're going to take our snail and just attach this piece to its layer right here. And then I like to just take some dimensionals and pop this up. I find it gives it a little bit of life and when I've embossed the background of a card, it also helps the uh, adhesive to stick to it. It's a little stronger than a snail would be. Okay, so just put that right in the center. You could offset it, do whatever you want, um, but I just plunked it right in the center. So I hope you had fun tonight just watching a couple of these simple stamping techniques. If you want, you can add any sort of embellishments, ribbon, whatnot to your cards, but I hope that you realize just by having a couple different colors of ink or cardstock, you can make a really diverse card just as it is. So if you have any questions or if there's any techniques that perhaps you're interested in me showcasing, please feel free to send me a message. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the items I've shown today, I do have a website in the bottom right hand corner there. But give me a shout if you have any questions. I'll also post pictures of these cards so you can see them up close. Thanks for joining us. Bye.